everyone, and welcome to episode 20, which is another Q&A question of the LDG Experience podcast. How are you guys doing, Tom, Pete? I am good. I slept well. Uh, I have been fed. So yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. Uh, I'm good. I haven't slept well. Uh-huh. But I'm doing okay because I have caffeine. That's all good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a busy stream last night. So yes. I, it kind of, I, I, it, out of nowhere, we had like, loads of people suddenly raid the stream uh, as I was painting Gaz Golf Racker. Who's was in front of us. You can't see him, but he is there. No, he's, he's joining us on the podcast, quietly unusual, in the corner. Yeah. Which is unusual. It is, yeah. yeah. He's usually more of a, a video, video vlogger. Yeah. Oh, I see. Than, he's not, yeah, not yeah, used uh, to the podcast format. No, he's not uh, used to that format. I see. <laughs> I don't know where yeah. I'm going with this. No, I mean, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it up. Keep going. Keep that <laughs> but no, it was quite a busy stream, uh, and it just kind of tired me out. And I didn't really give it. Just I was a bit buzzing, I think. Too much, too much adrenaline. Yeah, that's the it thing. Does, it does get you going though. Yeah, if someone really raids your stream, you're like, oh, oh shit, yeah. loads of people I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like talking, and people then suddenly the chat's going mental, and I'm like talking, and I'm like, and I've got these reading glasses now for doing painting, and it's. They're really great for painting, but obviously it's really hard to like focus on the on the yes. on a bit further away. So I'm like, <laughs> and like <laughs> squinting at the chat. So anyway, yeah, no, it was good. It was great. I'm I'm just about waking up now. It's good. Fabulous. And if ready to answer questions, where do you stream? Where do people I stream? wanted to come and watch you from, from my office. No, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I stream on uh, Onyx Dragon Gaming uh, on Twitch Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from six till ten, and. We're also on all various social media platforms under the same name, and hopefully soon, more importantly, uh, on YouTube, where we're going to finally start doing some tutorial videos, little quick, short Ooh. tutorial videos about little things in, that are just easy to do that people get like that get a bit stuck on things like transfers and faces and bases and all those sort of things. So just I always, quick. I always found that when you were doing, because I'm not a painter, mm. I don't, I've never been a painter, I don't care mm. what my ship looks like as long as it's on the battlefield. Uh, but when I've been watching. Uh, over the years, mm. m- m- way more years than I can now care to remember, yeah, that, that you have been like helping people in various mm. shops that I have been in. They always come away and be like, wow, that was really easy. I didn't know you could do that. And I'm like, yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I think your tutorial videos would be very good because yeah. of the, the methods that you use. I mean, people are very, very surprised with how quickly I've managed to paint Gasgol. Yeah. And it's like, I think it's because of the way I do so like physically the way I do it yes as in literal te- literal technique. technique of how you do it the, yeah. yeah so if I want if I want I'm going to try and share as much of that as possible yeah uh, and obviously you need the visual medium to be able to do that it's all well and good saying take the brush and do this it's yeah like, no you've like, got to you need to it, right? see it yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to be pushing forward with that so so you you've finished Gaskell nearly yes and you're doing Macari on his own stream because he deserves it he does yeah Macari and own once own. he is finished yes you will be able to purchase yes that Gaskell from LazyDragonGaming.com. So if you've seen the Garskull being painted, you'll be able to purchase him uh, from Lazy Dragon because we're going to start flogging second-hand and pre-painted miniatures mm-hmm. on LazyDragonGaming.com, which is where uh, you can also pre-order loads of things from us. Currently, Twilight Masquerade for Pokemon. Lazy Dragon Gaming, we are all over social media by the same name, including YouTube. And if you found us on YouTube, we would really appreciate it if you would leave us a subscription, which is completely free. Uh, ring the little belly thing. Uh, to get notified, yes. and also leave a comment and a like. That would be lovely. Uh, it would it will benefit us greatly. We are just a small channel getting started, so if you have found mm. us, we would appreciate that. Also to Pete's as well, and, yes. and any of his Onyx Dragon Gaming things. It doesn't cost you anything, and it would be delightful of you to do that. Very much so. Yeah, we would, we would, all of us, appreciate that. And we stream as well. We do. Uh, my good lady wife, uh, she streams the knitting, a little bit of the uh, relaxation. Mm. Yes, very good. Uh, you get quite a, a couple of people in every week to watch you just to relax after work, yeah. don't you? Uh, you just chill out and listen to the knit, knitting needles go clickety clack. Yeah. Uh, and I stream Locarna on Pixelborn, and we do that Mondays and Fridays at three pm and at seven pm uh, for those two things. And that is LD Gaming Live because Lazy Dragon Gaming was taken. Yes. Uh, so we couldn't get that. The buggers. The bastards. Yes. Um, so. so before we start today's episode, Pete. Oh, yes. I would like you to take oh, a look dear. at our first piece of fan art. Yes. And uh, tell us <laughs> what it is. I assume it's Tom. Yes. Uh, as an orc. Indeed. Uh, 
warring quite nicely into, <laughs> into the microphone. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that will be appearing on one of our videos, won't it? You're going to put it It yeah. will appear on videos. It will appear on social media. Yeah, so it'll be on our social media. So you'll be able to see our first piece of fan artwork. Yes, Ooh, I will do is... a special highlight on Instagram as well yeah, so. for fan art. Yes. So if anyone fancies sending us in any more fan art, Please do, because mm. it's great, and yeah. I love it. Did you see the microphone I am holding? Yes. yes. Yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate that. Grasping detail. A, we're grasping a microphone. Yeah, for those people out there who want to do it, it's like, I, I think of myself more as, a, as some sort of Eldar Farseer. Yeah. You know, keeper of the Black Library, because yes. obviously that's what mostly I do, is hoard books. And old yes. white dwarfs, so if that helps you with inspiration. <laughs> yes. Pete as yeah. an Eldar... Uh, Eldar Farseer. An Eldar Short Seer. Yeah, Short Seer, yeah. Right. yeah. These <laughs> days, yeah. Eyesight's going buggered, Pete. You're not a Farseer anymore. Yeah. Um, well, clearly. I'm... And I can barely see what's going to figure out what's going on today, let alone tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, clearly, I am the only girl on this podcast, mm. and therefore I must be a custodies. Yes. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, indeed. They've always been there, Pete. They are. Yeah. Just off screen. Just off screen. Yeah. I've right. always been here. I don't I, always talk. I do believe anyway. th- that we are doing a Q&A today. We are. And I do Quite. believe that Evie has some Q uh, for us to A. God, I hope I have some A. <laughs> yes. Hopefully. So, yeah. Hopefully we don't just both sit here and go, uh? uh. <laughs> I also have a couple of questions. I swear to God, if there's one of those ones that's like, if a train leaves the station at 9am, I'm like, no, I don't no, care. I quit. Turn no. the mic off. Let's go. No, it's too early for Going back to fucking bed. Yeah. Uh, so the first question I've got for you guys uh, yep. comes from Spectrum Z ninety on YouTube. Hey Zach. Hey hey. Uh, question number one is: If someone was to get into Warhammer, mm. which age is the best place to start? Ooh. Ooh. I used to get asked this a lot because I used to work in a store, and this well, is going to be a slightly answer. controversial thing. Am I going to hate you for your answer? Not really, but okay. there's like the problem is it's it's it varies. Okay. This is the point, right? All is right. I would see kids come in and their mum, their parents would either be really young and I'd be like, mm. they're a bit too young for this. And their parent would insist, oh, but they're so smart for their ages, they're basically pushing crayons up their nose. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, I can't recommend it for you. Um, I, To be honest, my, my view is it's when it captures them. Oh, I think I think the question is more a, a aimed at what thirty forty k age of Sigmar fantasy oh, age it? rather than yes, years of I age. I believe so. Sorry, read but it again. Can I ask, read can it I, again because I feel like so. It's... If someone was to get into Warhammer, yeah. which age is the best place to start? Oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry. I so actually, thinking, but, yeah. but the question stands. Though, yeah, yeah. And then we might as well answer the question yeah, yeah. that you heard. Yes. Because we which is what age do you what start age the game do you start? Yeah, because I, I, I think it, 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 like I said, it varies. And I think yes. usually the usual thing used to be around like 10, 11. Yeah, I right? was thinking. But then I look at when I started, and I was a bit younger than that. Yeah. Because I grabbed White Wolf and I got fascinated by it. So I think my view is around that age. But if, if it's something they latch onto, mm-hmm. if they see the like Space Marines or whatever and they get really into it, let them froth about stuff before they. Yeah. Do it. If they, if they look like they're really interested in go for it. Yeah. Anyway, moving I, on. To I, I think that, personally, I think mm. around 12 or 13 is when you can actually appreciate everything yeah. about it more. Yeah, yeah. Younger than that, I think it's a case of, like, not humouring them as much, but sort of getting them the cheaper stuff that you can pick up and oh, letting God, them yeah, play yeah. around with that rather than trying to teach them 40k at, True. like, 10, which is... True, but getting them into the setting. It's yeah. more the thing, yeah. yeah. But and now answering the actual, the actual question. question. On, on that note as well, mm. Games Workshop have published books for children yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. aimed at children. Yes, so mm. a little bit law breaking, but very good. I think they're fun. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. if the setting is something that interests the children, yes. then there are books out there for. I think it's a very good idea. To they have always them. talk about the hobby gene as well. Like yeah. we used to talk about that at Games Workshop. The hobby gene is that there are some people. Like I said, like myself, I started really young. I must be yeah. what like. Seven, eight, nine, something like that. Yeah. Um, but I had the kind of brain that wanted to sit mm-hmm. and like spend ages painting something or building something, like making sure it was all perfect. Um, obviously, I'd start with airfix kits a couple of years before that. So yeah, it's one of those. It's like it's all individual, but roughly around that age. Yeah. Anyway, on yeah. to like I said, the question that actually, actually asked yeah. rather than the question <laughs> that I heard. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What what I think the better what system? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like age, I think. Because mm. obviously, you've got Fantasy's back, yes. Old World is back, you've got Age of Sigmar, 30k, 40k, 
Adeptus Titanicus is still available. Yeah. Um, Which is well technically 30k. It's technically 30k, but it is a different game. Yeah. Blood Bowl. Yeah. Blue Kill Blue. Team. Yeah. And Warcry. So yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about those. Yeah. So where I think personally, I think the best place to start is 40k in the 40k universe. I should say. Yeah. Because it is like the biggest one. Yeah. Like it's the most popular one, um, and it really speaks to like uh, so many things. So many people. Yeah. And nowadays, if I was going to say to somebody, I would probably say start with Kill Team. I hear I haven't had a chance to. I, it's a game I really want to have a go at, but I haven't had a chance to play it because I'm too busy painting massive armies. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the ability to just grab a box, build up some guys with some like. It's the same thing as I used to like Necromunda. It's that whole you end up with getting personalities to your to your yes. characters. Like yeah. the brief time we played version one of Kill Team, we had a good laugh. Yeah, we did. We did. We, we enjoyed a lot of, a lot yeah, of good we had a good fun. Uh, admittedly, we had a good time. Yeah. In other games, I I don't know whether it was the opponent though. I maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, but I our game of, of Kill Team was that's hilarious. Hilarious. Fun. Yes. With yeah. my with my with our, my slippery witches. Slippery witches yeah. and my nipple guns. Yes. Um, Lictors with flesh hooks. Yes. To be more specific for yeah, those people was, who are wondering was, what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, if you imagine hilarious. that a lictor is stood there and he fires his nipples out at the witch yeah. elf, yeah. who then lively avoids it because they're covered in oil. Yeah, um, and latex. So and latex. Slip, slip, right slip right off. That was us just joking yeah, about that. That was, that was a long time. That was yeah. hilarious. We had a much fun. But yeah, speaking of, yeah, I would say Kill Team's a great place to start. You can buy a box. You can really go to town on it. You're not worried yeah. about like, oh, I've got to paint this and a bunch more stuff. The game, whilst the game is very different to 40k, it is a, a, like a, I don't want to say it's not a simplified game, but it is. Yeah. A, no, it's not a simple not game. Not at all. But the point being is, it's like, it's a good place. I think it's the best place to start. Um, it's more condensed. Yeah, like I said, because you've got the... I, I, well, the way I think I have with games is, the more playing pieces you have, so a playing piece can be a unit, or it can be a titan, or it can be like a character. The more playing pieces you have, the more abstract the rules have to become so that you can get through a, through a game. So when you get down to like the squad on squad level, where each guy is his own character, you can be a bit more granular and you can have more stuff and things that they can do and upgrades and all that sort of stuff because you've only got 10 people or so to track and you might not be using all of them at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, my personal thing would be, yeah, get into that. Or if you, again, if fantasy is the thing that really grabs you more than science fiction, um, the same I would say is true of Warcry. Yeah. Now that they moved away from it just being... Chaos dudes, and there's all sorts of cool So I have, I have a slightly different take, mm. being more in the selling of the game industry. So we usually go off, first and foremost, <coughs> are you a fantasy or a sci-fi person? Yes, that's usually where. And then we tend to explain to people literally what it would cost to build an army. Yeah. And gauge by that. The re like if they're like I can't possibly afford that. Yeah. It's like okay, this is a game called Warcry or mm. Kill Team, depending on the. Answer. Oh yeah, I think if no, um, if, in, if I was doing it in person, it's different because yeah. obviously you and I, I, well, you used to poke me and make me do it. Yeah. But yeah, I used to sell like I've yeah. done this selling of games workshop for like fifteen years now on yeah. and off. So yeah, it is very much yeah. You you kind of gauge things in the conversation, but in the abstract. Yeah, in the in abstract, the abstract of, of being away from any kind of sales perspective. Yeah. Or and not knowing your particular preferences. Yes, that would be my yeah. That's I'm my I'm a little disappointed that the two games that should really lead into the bigger games, so Warcry yeah. and Kill Team, are not as good at that as they should be. Yes, I think they could be a better lead-in game. They've gone too far into making them their own game, which is okay. Yeah, yeah. But if they'd have made them ever so slightly more like the game they are based off, like 40k and, and yeah, like Age yeah. of Sigma, yeah. it would sort of guide people to the bigger game. I agree, better. yeah. It would have like, that it would have that sort of gateway. Gateway yeah. element, which they unfortunately but, those games don't have in abundance. They do have it. Yeah. But then I think back not... way, way back into the mists of time, mm. when Milton Bradley was the, the seller of Hero Quest and Space Hulk. True. Which for a lot of people in my generation was their gateway That's into true. the worlds of fantasy and 40k. And they bent no resemblance <laughs> to true. the tabletop game. Yeah, that's um, true. And how Warhammer got to start with a, as basically a glorified D&D &D 
yeah, game. It was an original you know, game. it's like they, they they were the first importers of D and D. This is a quick history lesson. Games Workshop was the first importers of D and D into the UK, and they started having people that they knew make miniatures for D and D, and then they ended up with so many of these miniatures, and they were like, "Do you not know be really cool if we could use all these models at the same time?" Yep. Rick, you look like you know how to write things. <laughs> and then Rick Priestley wrote Warhammer. So that's a very brief and very like abstract history. Yeah. But that's the point. I think yeah. I think we sometimes we sort of underestimate like these people sometimes. I think because like I said that's how I got into a lot of these things. I do just... I do agree with you that mm. maybe I look at it a bit that way. But mm. I've been doing this for so long now and had so many people say to me, the "Where's the yeah. Where's the gateway game to 40k? This mm. isn't 40k." Fair enough. Which is where I'm, I'm taking it from, essentially. And I would like a 40... Ooh. No, actually, they do now. Because I would argue, Combat Patrol. Yes, that is true. But I, I actually don't think they're still doing that. Yeah, they are. Are they? Yeah. Are you sure? Every, yeah, every... They do, in fact, they're doing it so much that they're introducing it into the new Age of Sigmar edition. Okay. I know yeah. they had Vanguard for yeah. uh, so, Age of Sigmar. Yeah, yeah, but they were the boxes. But now, they're specifically calling them... I think they're calling them Spearheads. They okay. are valid. It is a specific version of the game for Age of Sigmar. Right. They are in the same way that Combat Patrol is. Yeah. I thought they'd stopped Combat no, Patrol. No, Combat Patrol's a thing. If you open any codex now, there is a section oh. in the codex for that particular Combat Patrol. Ah. Yeah. So, for those people who don't know, one of the, one of the, like, the larger boxes you can buy for each faction is called a Combat Patrol. Yes. For and, and this bit I knew. They're roughly around £100. Check your local retailer for whatever. Yeah. But they are... They've designed them now so that they are... They match up against each other. I see. So you have to build them in a certain way. So like certain upgrades and things, it'll tell you. Uh, yeah. There'll be a list of things you can download. The rules are free. Um, and yeah, actually, I just only thought about that. That is the gateway, really, because okay. you buy a box that's got two or three units in it. You build it, you paint it, and then it plays with other combat patrols. Because uh, I'm speaking of this, I keep forgetting that I'm planning to, to run a combat patrol event at one of my uh, local. Uh, gaming store to, for just this reason to get people back into painting and playing yes because it's a, it's a really easy it's a good way to try it's, if you're into the hobby already it's a great way to try new armies yeah it's really um, good. and for those people who are out of it I forgot yes this is a really good way to get into the game because obviously it is the same game are they doing it, that for Age of Sigma now? yes ah, well, and they've made good. it and they've made it so that because they talk about this new thing where they're doing the, mo- the rules they're doing the most modular rules so there's like four parts to the rules now. Right. And they're like, if you want to play Spearhead, which is the version for Age of Sigma, you only need this one. You don't need all these extra special rules. You, uh, you just okay, play okay. with this basic amount of rules. And then if you're playing competitive, you use two, three, and four. And I see, I see. So yeah, they're specifically making it a thing. Right. Um, and then that, redoing the boxes. Yes, there we go. We that, got there is, the that is it's the suddenly true. Yes. Yeah. So we both agree that Age of Sigma and 40k are the two oh, that yeah. you want to pick. And if you want to start, yeah. combat patrol, if you and a friend would yes. be the best way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, pick definitely. A, pick an army yeah, each, yeah. pick a faction each, mm. and, and get a combat patrol yeah, each. Yeah, they yeah. They are fantastic, go. yeah. Eventually, we got round to an answer. We did, to we did. Question. We got there. See, this is um, why we talk. But yeah, the, 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 um, the combat patrol thing uh, is new to 10th edition, right? Yes. So it's a new yes, thing. Yes. Very new. That's probably why I missed it. I had very little to do with 10th edition. Yeah, they, they, so they sort of tried to make like combat patrol used to be a thing where it was like 500 points. And mm. People used to call it 40k in 40 minutes and all these sort of things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, now they've made it like an official format. Right. Which, yeah, and they try and they've tried to balance them off against each other. Which right. is why every time there's a new codex release, they tweak what's in the boxes to I make see. them more... Like, that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. I'm going to be painting a Dark Eldar one in the style of the original third edition Dark Eldar. How very throwback. I know. Of that's my thing. I've realised that's my thing right you now. Are retro. I'm a retro guy. Yeah, almost antique, but not quite. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Combat Patrol for 30k mm. and Spearhead. Yes, for Spearhead for Age of Sigmar. Uh, the reason that neither of us picked 30k or Fantasy, uh, Fan- Warhammer Fantasy Battle, from my perspective, uh, 30k is Space Marines and pretty much nothing else and gives you very little... I think it's also spectrum. something that you, you come, on, come to when you're invested in the yeah, lore a lot so. more. Fantasy, the what is now the old world, it would have been... Would have had the same insert thing of yeah. play, do this for one fancy. Had it be the main game, but because it's it's a returning thing yeah. again, it relies on it relies on a, or a previous investment. I think so too. In the hobby, I, I agree with you. I like think you need to know what the Warhammer world, Warhammer fantasy world, to really get a lot out of it. Yeah. Whereas Age of Sigmar is the ongoing, current thing where they're supporting. Also, the models for Age of Sigmar are beautiful. Oh yeah, I, I love the models for Age yeah. of Sigmar. I actually think they're the nicest range of all. I like the silver neck. Yeah, I like the Age of Sigmar range. I'm not going to talk about the naked halftime show that is the 
to fire slaves. Well, we ignore them and go to every other range. Fair play. Yeah, that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like they're really good. But yeah, so those were fish elves. I like those. I hate them. Anyway, turtle, they're... bro. That's they, that turtle's are, amazing. What's wrong with water? you? Are they not in water? Who cares? It's a battle turtle. Are they riding derpy sharks? Who knows? Yeah, anyway. well, it's a battle turtle. This is not what we're here for. No, I am going to insist that you no. f- you acknowledge the battle turtle. I acknowledge the battle turtle. That's fine. Right? The turtle's cool. Yes. Right? That's I'll allow I'll... that. Thank I'll you. I will give you your battle turtle. Thank you. Give me derp sharks. They are derpy sharks. Yes. I will grant you the sharks look dumb. Awesome. But moving on. Moving on. Okay, so... Let's go. What's the next question? Next question is also from Spectrum Z90. Good. The the last one took us enough time to answer, so we need to through it. Four times. Four times, yeah. Yeah. Very good. So three weeks ago, Spectrum Z90 went to the chippy. Do we want anything? Yes. Yeah, battered sausage and chips. No salt and vinegar. Uh, Battered sausage and chips and gravy with plenty of salt and vinegar. There we go. Battered sausage and chips with mushy peas. Yeah. None of us are a fish people. No, I don't. I actually, don't. if he's paying, I'll scamp him. Oh, that's true, actually. Do I have to pay you back? Yeah, that's the point, yeah. Because if I have to pay you back, then battered sausage, chips and gravy. Yeah. If, if, if I don't pay yeah, you back, yeah. then I would like yeah. <laughs> a large fish and chips mm. with gravy and a meat potato pie and uh, what's it? Some, uh, what's uh, the, the meat pie that they yeah. do? As long as they're not Hollands, the mm. pies are awful. Okay. Not a butter pie. No, do you know I'm not a you. I'm a terrible northerner. I'm not a massive fan of butter pies. I, when I discovered what they were, this is a quick side tangent. When I yes. discovered what they were, I was like, so this is a pie for poor people. Yes. Who can't afford to put anything in their pies. Yes. It really confused me. Yes, they now are. become a delicacy. I yeah, no, like, it's it, butter pies were basically we can't afford meat. Yeah, I know. That's what got me. I was like, I believe, what? if I'm not mistaken, they came around in World War Two. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, when when it was. Like meat was harder to come by, and therefore yeah. you could get milk, but you didn't want to kill the cow to get the meat. You wanted yeah, to milk the cow yeah, yeah. and get butter and all the rest of it. So you just bung the butter in with some potatoes. Um, they come out the ground. They come out the ground. Yeah. Plus, if you prawn them once, they come back. Yeah, we have that in our oh, cows. No, you can't plant cows. We can. Well, we can well, I was going to say you can, but, but potatoes. That makes more we sense. Had a, we had a vegetable patch in my when I was a kid, and we planted potatoes one year, and we dug up potatoes for five years. That's. Just, just, yeah, regardless of whether you want them or not, they're back. Oh, yeah, so what it was hilarious. You always miss like one or two, and maybe like, oh, the potatoes are back. Oh well, <laughs> more potatoes. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. anyway, is there another question? There is. Oh, uh, this one is directed to you, Tom. Oh, but oh. I think if we think about an answer as well, yep. we can oh. answer it too. Oh God! Yes, he is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe Thanks. Not. Yeah. <laughs> not guilty. Yes. <laughs> That's the most standard answer to those questions. Carry on. Overall. <laughs> Damn it. Sidebar. So, Tom, if you were a green skin leader, yes. what would you name your tribe or your faction? Ooh. Oh, my word. What a great name. What a great question, Robert. Yeah. What would be a great name? I'm, I'm pretty hopeless at naming shit. Mm. Uh, I'd need a war, wouldn't I? What would my war be? Well, you, well if your yeah. war was named, you'd be war whatever your war was named. Yeah, so but if you're talking war... about tribe or clan, oh, right, okay. you're thinking like the, right, the well, Red Eye Clan yeah. or so, Crooked Moon. So this question was asked on our Gorka Morka episode. Oh, oh right, right, yeah. Well, to yeah. give you a bit of an idea. Ooh. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a sneaky git. Mm. I like to think of myself as a little bit sort of... I would, uh, I would give you that. Like yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> what's the... Blood Axis. Blood Axis. Yeah. So I'm much more of a blood axe mm. than I am a goth. Certainly. Yeah, I'm much more that way inclined. Mm. Um, so I think that the tribe would definitely be called the thieving gits. I think I like okay. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, my war boss name would see. I'm I'm much more a goblin fan than an orc. You see. So you said green skin. Yeah, that's so. true. So I would, I would be the thi- I would be a goblin because mm. I prefer Skarsnick and Grom. I mean, we're just gonna say, would you be regular goblin? Would you be forest or would you be knight? I would be knight. Yeah, a knight, knight goblin. Knight Skarsnick is, is bro for life. He is. Yeah. He's awesome. Uh, so and I, I, I would be uh, sneaking. Yeah. Uh, of the of the thieving gits. That makes sense. I like yeah. it. Yeah. World Edge Mountains. Wah sneaking from yeah. the World Edge Mountains, mm. and I would be definitely be a Skarsnick esque. Night Goblin. Mm. Uh, that is where my uh, loyalties doth lie. I'm not a big orky person. Apart from Garskull, obviously. Garskull is amazing. But, yeah, I'm, my, my loyalties lie with the Night Goblin, so I would I would go with that, I think. See, I think I'd come up with an answer. Of course. If you want to know mine. Yes, yeah, of course. I think mine would be the the Cracked, cracked Ed. Cracked Ed, yes. Yeah, 
So the symbol would be the, the sort of classic orc glyph with a big jagged, line, jagged line through it. it. Yeah. And it would be uh, the war boss Ed Smasher. Ed Smasher. Yeah, it'd be a big black orc that just literally like has a great big freaking like iron head big spike on the front. Yeah. Nuts enemy like leaders. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's where I would go yeah. from. So I I like to think of myself as a bit of a Gretchen. Yes. Mm. And I'd like to also think of myself as an activist, so I would... Oh, I see. The, re- the revolution. The revolution. I, I would be part of the revolution. Yes. Mm. Um, so, but I don't know... I, I don't know what I would call myself in terms of name. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not very good at naming things. That one was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Especially given no time to think about it. Yeah, no prep time. No prep yeah. time on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I don't know, Ben. I'm not sure. No, I think I'd, I'd end up with something like... <laughs> like... Well, you're definitely clumsy. Angry gobbo. You're, you're, you're definitely clumsy. clumsy. Gobbo. You're clumsy, though, so clunking or something. Clunking. Yeah, because you always make a noise when you go through a door. Sounds about yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's 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 a good yeah. good name for a goblin, yeah. yeah. Clunky. Or for Gretchen. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like that one. Hard though. Definitely mm. no prep time on that one given. But yeah, so there you go. Uh, but no, I, I definitely uh, prefer the uh, the night goblins to uh, to any of the others. So. Well that's that's what these episodes are about. Yeah, of course. Just fast answers. Fast, yeah. <laughs> fast and or furious. Fast yes. and or furious. Ah, uh, why that franchise didn't burn out at all. Um, anyway, go on. What have we got any more? Because um, I have trying one. Trying to find. Du, 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 du. No. No, we're done. Yeah. Okay. I'm done with my questions. Well, I I had one from the call was actually part of a discussion that was being held around me, okay. which I thought was quite interesting, and I thought I'd, I'd remember it. Yeah. And I would uh, cause an argument mm-hmm. uh, because the question simply was, which is the strongest race in forty k? Ooh. Now, I actually Googled this answer as well okay. while I was here. Mm. So I have a list. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know where this list comes from. Strongest race. Uh, this, com- this comes from Gamer Rant, mm. according to them. But I'll get to that in a minute. Where do you? Wh- what is your opinion on the, the strongest 40k race? I, I have my what I think is an answer already. I think um, I have a, thinking about it for again trying to be objective about it. Yes, yeah, so you have about, to be objective. You can't just. Respond. I had a, a couple of thoughts came into my head straight away. Mm. So immediately I was like, "Well, you've got orcs because they're really hard to get rid of, and they always come back, and they they, they, they sort of evolve and get better and stronger and faster and whatever." Yep. Um, they're like potatoes. They are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You plant one and you get them forever. You just get them forever. Yeah. Yeah. He's not as good as chips though. No. Necrons was my ne- second go-to because obviously a lot of them haven't woken up, but they did get beaten by the Elder and the Old Ones originally, and that's what put them to sleep. And then I thought about it and thought, the one I think is probably the single strongest race in 40k is the Tyranids. And the reason for that is we've only seen the the, the, the tendrils. Yes. Like we haven't, like we know, we have no idea how much is behind them. Mm. Yeah. Right? We have no idea. So my view is, from an objective point of view, is that they've just got the sheer mass and numbers to just sweep through the galaxy. We just haven't really seen much of it yet. Yeah. That's where I would go from an objective thinking and standpoint. And the fact that they evolve, like they, they consume biomass and then evolve based on the biomass. Yes, we, we have managed to stop them three times. But the point being is like it's more of an overwhelming number. I mean, the three. last yeah. time they were very fortunate. Yeah, we were very fortunate. Yeah, with yeah, the you, were, you, you, yeah, were, yeah. You, you had help beating <laughs> beating Leviathan. Yeah, yeah was, that was yeah. that one could have gone wrong. Mm-hmm. That was a close run. Oh, thing. indeed. Yeah, but this um, is the thing. That's why I think. I think and that was the, the biggest incursion as well. That yes, that it was coming up from yes. the galactic under the galactic plane. It did. Yes, yes. and uh, the um, ball doesn't like it up on. No, no. no. Um, but yeah, so the the um, I am of a similar opinion to yeah. you. Uh, mm-hmm. The the three, uh, which of course are orcs, because. Yeah. Like they're everywhere. Once they're on a planet, you can't really get rid of them without expending mm. more effort than it's worth. Maybe Necrons, because well, they haven't all woken up yet, and yes. their technology is unfathomably and more in advance than everybody else's. Yeah. Uh, great works signifies just how yeah, like yeah. powerful the Necrons mm. were, and they they don't they did lose to the Eldar, but then the other are waning. But the place. Eldar are Fubard, yeah. um, and the old ones are gone. Mm. And we are talking about current, and therefore yes. also, but they also they fight amongst themselves. They do. So there's they, a bit they, of that. So do the orcs. 
True, but the orcs type fight amongst themselves and then come out stronger. That like, is whereas true. the Necrons kind of just batter each other until they're yeah. both silly. They, they get distracting long. I think if the fights. Silent King had unified them rather yeah. than not. I think that would be different. Yeah, because I mean, you look at like Trazen versus yeah. uh, Oracle and the Diviner. Yeah. And like how long that fight, you know, yeah. they, they spent all that time fighting each other. They yeah. could have like massacred an entire region of space. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I think that's their one fallback. Yeah, that is true. And then, of course, the Tyranids, which yeah. are, like you said, we haven't seen them all yet. And no. the ones we have seen. They're hard to stop. Yeah, they can. And they're laying waste to entire systems. Yeah. You know, and there are only so many. While the, the Imperium of Man oh, is, yeah, yeah. is big, yeah. it is also finite. Yes. They will run out eventually of. Yeah. And the more they take, hmm. the less manpower and resources that the Imperium has to try and stop them. I, think, um, I tell you what, the one thing one thing that feels like a really big plot hole in 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 forty k law when it comes to Tyranids, right? Yeah. If I if 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 I'm an admiral, mm. okay, uh, of a of a thing, because the best time to take space to take the nids out is in space. Yes. Okay. Because they are bad in space. They're not bad. No, they have they have quite a lot of awesome like they, they, there's a lot of battles that happen in space where they don't go the way of the Imperium or whatever. Mm. So, see devastation of Baal, obligatory reference. Yep. But. I'd be like, you know those those exterminators warheads. Mm. Put them on the torpedoes. Yeah, because surely, right? If you hit a bio ship with the life eater virus, would it work in space? Why wouldn't it? Because it needs oxygen. No, it creates oxygen by breaking down. Yeah, but it doesn't need to. It doesn't need the oxygen. Can it? Can the life eater virus work in a vacuum? This is what they don't want you to know. Because yeah. if it isn't, this could be a massive plot. Well, I have to be like, I'm gonna guess that the reason they don't do it is. A couple fold. One, I don't think it works in a vacuum. I think mm. it needs to ignite and get going. But I'm pretty certain that the high ships aren't always all vacuum. No, it's true. So if you punch, punch it, it through, through the side, the thing. And it just eats it from the inside. Yeah, and the other one is... once it starts going, it creates its own oxygen. Yes. So it just keeps going. But what happens if a little bit of Tyranid survives the life eater virus because they can't set it on fire afterwards and they start sort of using it and... Abusing it against you coming back the other way. I don't think we can. That's the point. Life, the life, what, what's worse than the life eating virus? Like nothing. Surely someone must have thought. But of yeah, that. I feel like I, it's one of those things that's been nagging yeah. me for years. I'm there, like, there must be an answer to the. Yeah, question. I'm sure there probably is. I, I kind of really want to like I, next time I go to an event where there's like people from the studio, I'm gonna ask you. <laughs> Why? I'm gonna be like, right, what's you, how do you get out of this one? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it really feels like like. Why yeah, are we not using like it? a lot of these things? Like you can get out of it. Yeah, it's like the I remember there was a really awesome thing in the White Hawk where someone was like. Why do they bother with exterminators? Why don't they just drop rocks on planets? And somebody wrote this amazing diatribe that was like, rocks are not free, citizens. <laughs> and it like goes through all the amount of costs and everything it would take to like move asteroids and all this and throw them down. And I was like, it was brilliant. And they, they, they thought it was so brilliant, they, they took it from like the forum where it was and put it in White Dwarf. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the other one on yeah. this list, from GamerRant... Dot com. Mm. I don't know who they are or what they do, yeah. but, but thank you for they the random games. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Pete. That's right. Uh, yeah. it, and it's only six days ago this was updated. Ooh. They have at number one. Mm. They have the Tyranids, which I think we are agreed on. Yep, yeah. yeah. Now their number two Ooh. is Chaos Space Marines. Ah, see, so you know, no. I don't agree with that because self defeating nature of chaos. Yes, self defeating nature of chaos. At the end of the day, mate, they're gonna fight yeah. each other. They are gonna fight. There's each gonna come other. a tipping point where they're like, "Yeah, I could just stab that guy in the back." Yeah, that's the, the black. Point. The black legion as a whole <clears throat> is quite scary. Oh god, yeah, because but, they don't tend to fight that yeah. way. Yeah, but there are countless warlords and sorcerers and all sorts from other factions that would happily have a baden's head on a pole oh, god, uh, yeah. and take his. To, like try to take his place or get rid of the Black Legion They're, they don't all fight for a single cause and we're not talking about Tyranids here the Tyranids are focus well, they're not the single thing, thing. they talk about the Tyranids like they're not even an organ they, they are one organism. organism yes they're like the you know the individual creatures are like the finger fingers yeah. you see on a yeah. hand you know yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the Tyranids are scary mm. because they don't fight amongst themselves no there's no yeah they yeah, are literally the, don't yeah. yeah they've all got one goal one goal we don't know exactly what that yeah. goal is. Yeah. Uh, but That's what stops a lot of the factions, I think, yeah. in, in 40k. Uh, the next one on their list is the Imperium of Man. Now, I now the Imperium has up there because of its pure ubiquity. Yeah. But, again, it, communication across such a vast network. Yeah. There are people out for themselves. Yep. Like, the bureaucracy, the stagnation. Yeah, again, yeah. even, an, even in, the, in the gold age of the Imperium, you know, during the Great Crusade... 
they were powerful enough to conquer most of the galaxy but think about they didn't have to deal with some of the threats that they deal yeah, with now they, yeah they, they didn't have Tyranids they just beat the Orcs I granted I think the Primarchs would have done would do really well yeah. against a lot of these threats but at the end of the day yeah humanity's thing is that they're we, we just breed like rabbits yeah there's a lot of us, mm. but we are very disorganised. Which again, and most of us are kept in a state of like absolute like yeah. bewilderment. Effectively, yeah. like we we have no idea what's going on beyond the walls of our office cubicle, let alone yeah. in the galaxy as a wider venue. So number four on mm. on the list is orcs. Yeah, uh, I think they should be higher up. I do but, too. Yeah, but um, they are on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, chaos demons. I don't agree. They should no. be on the list at all because um, well, again, because they require. Yeah, they can't get well, it. They require the mortal followers to do stuff yeah. in order for them to manifest more. Yeah, I more think they're, I think the the chaos demons are weaker factions in four. Yeah, because they wax and wane. Yeah, so they're, they're, their That's power the comes and goes. Yeah, they, they might take over an entire system, but yeah. eventually they're all just collapsing on itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, yeah. no. Uh, number six is Necrons. I think they should be higher. Again, up. yeah, because I, I, we haven't seen everything. And again, the, the the reason why that they don't aren't as strong, like you said, is mm. they fight amongst themselves, the same yes. as orcs do. Uh, but they do, the orcs do come out stronger, like yeah. you said again. Mm. So um, number seven, yeah, uh, the Adeptus Custodes. Individually, a very powerful faction within forty k. But they're limited by numbers. There's ten thousand of them. Yeah, and there's a galaxy that's huge. Yeah, individually, a singular custodian, yeah, is phenomenally powerful. But the also the point is they're all individuals. Yes, because this is the point they make a lot in the Heresy is that. The difference between the legions and the custodians is the custodians all they're all individually like heroes of legend. Yeah. Right? But like independent they're like independent characters in yeah. the game. They, that's the whole point. Each one fights like that. Yeah. They don't give a shit what the guy next to him is doing because that's the whole thing. Whereas Marines operate as a unit. Yes. Or as a chapter or as a legion. They are it's about their coordination. Yeah. And that's what gives them their strength. So, yeah, the problem with custodians is, yeah, individually one on one, sure, but I put them way down line because, again, they're not designed for that. They're no. designed to be bodyguards. Yeah. You know, they're designed to I just, be. I just don't mm. think that the Adeptus Custodes as a faction could possibly do anything within the galaxy without help. Because, again, you blow up a ship, done. Yeah. You know, like, like, they might be really good in fight for close, close foot combat, but if you ambush a ship with like, a bunch of them on, they're dead. Void smithereens. They're dead. Yeah. So, like, they still can't survive the void if you blow up their ship. Exactly. Like, so, so, yeah, that's yeah. what I think. No, I don't agree with that at all. Mm. Uh, number eight, though, mm. this is one I haven't considered, and I think we're going to disagree with this one as well, mm. is the Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, <laughs> while the Adeptus Mechanicus is a very powerful faction, yeah. if there were ever a faction that suffered from infighting, backbiting, and like distraction, distraction because they're, they're not a pro they're not a fighting force. No, like it's the, you could, like, the Imperium's thing is they the Imperium wants to take like wants to rule the galaxy. Yes, right? it wants to put humanity on every planet and things like. That. The Mechanicus don't care about that. They fight as a means to an end, not yeah. the end itself. Like they're not trying to take over a planet. They're like. There might be this SCCs. Well, like yeah, we'll lay siege to this planet and waste to it. We'll grab the SCC and then bugger off. Yeah. Because like that's it. We're done. We don't yeah. want the planet. No, not bothered. We just planet. want this. Unless of course it's got minerals on it that we can turn into a forge world, and then we'll do that. Exactly. And then uh, so yeah, no, I would say they're way no, down. No, I, I don't agree. The Adeptus Mechanicus yeah. is like arms and armor. One. They have a lot of arms and armor, but yeah. they don't tend to use it themselves. No. It's and they also get really uppity about using Let's say with the Tide Legions. Yeah. Like you look at um, like one of my favorite moments in the uh, Taros book. Yeah. Is they have like, they're like, yeah, we'll help with the reconquest of Taros against these upstart Tau. And they, they deploy a bunch of Warhound Titans and they're like wreaking havoc on everything that the Tau have. And then all of a sudden, over the one day, all over the, the horizon, a Tiger Shark AX10 pops up. Double mega rail guns, uh, a warhound kills it on the spot, and the Egyptian Captain Commanders just go, We're not playing anymore, and just pack up all the Titans and leave. Yep, like that's that's that gives you a really good idea of like what yep. they're in. We lost the Titan, about. we're off. Yeah, no, we're not playing anymore. We're not playing we, anymore. If we're gonna play fair, then no, we're not playing. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to play. Yeah, uh, and they will literally just abandon campaigns because they might they've lose. done what or they've done what yeah. they want to do, they've, they've achieved their goal, yeah, or something scary's turned up and, and moderately damaged the Titan and they don't want to lose them, so they just bugger off and leave you to yeah, it. Exactly. Like, so, no, the Mechanicus, not on my list. I think my top my top picks remain the same, which yeah, is same as Tyranid, yours. Orcs and Necrons. Exactly. I think are the most powerful. Yeah. Uh, so, moving on. Yep. 
And this one leads off that one. Yeah. And I'm not too sure yeah. if this question is phrased or was phrased to me correctly, yeah. but I'll ask it as was mm. asked. What is the evilest faction of 40k? Ooh. Which one is the one which is the evilest? I would say Dark Elder. Ooh, interesting. Because their whole... So, like, Nids are not evil. No. They no. are neutral. Their thing is they just want to secure biomass. Yes. Right? Uh, Necrons, again, not evil. They're just out for themselves. Yeah, they're not good. They're not good. Really. But like, they, they, they're good for themselves. Yeah, but yeah. For, and obviously, from and some of the things they do, things like um, uh, in Illuminator's Eris, his experiments could be described as evil or whatever. Yeah. Like individual Necrons, sure, but as a race, yeah. Uh, I think we're going for the race, right? Because the reason I and like one could usually be people to say, "Ah, oh, chaos." Chaos. But that, but I would argue no, because yeah. I wouldn't say it's it's chaos. It's not evil. No. If you look at these, if we take the sort of basic D and D alignment chart, they they can be evil. Like they can do things for petty reasons yes. and, and for like evil reasons, but like you look at a lot of characters, they do they they do what they do out of a sense of nobility or or like brotherhood yeah. or like a Batten's whole thing about making the Black Legion was just the 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 fraternity of the legions is something I want to return to. Yes, yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't argue that a Batten is evil. Well, you've also got the the thing with like Nurgle, right? Yeah. Where you know a lot of people, a lot of his followers that aren't mm. rotting away, yeah. tend to see him as rather a happy, child. benevolent. Yeah, yeah. like he's right. he's there to help and yeah. save. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because one of his things is rebirth. They don't yeah, all yeah. have like negative connotation. There are some good mm. connotation mm. within each of the chaos gods. Yeah, um, well, like Corn <clears> vengeance. <throat> like you know, yeah. you've had your entire family killed. Like yeah. you go, you swear your allegiance to Corn, and you go off. After the people that do it, one yeah. could argue you have a heroic motivation. Yeah. The reason I say the Dark Eldar is because they are specifically their entire raison d'etre, their entire thing is about causing pain and suffering to others as a form of sustenance. Yes. Now you could say, but but I think the thing is they delight in it. Yes. That's well, the point. That's, that's the, the difference. Yeah. Is that they they know what they are doing. They know how they are doing it. And they do it willingly and gleefully. Yes. Yeah. Like other people might do, might have like convoluted reasons, like someone like Fabius Bile might do horrific experimentation, but have... Um, In his own mind, at least. Yeah. It's, the, <laughs> it's that classic banality of evil yeah. that people talk about for like, when you go back to World War Two, is a lot of people who were on the sort of quote unquote bad, bad side were just doing their jobs. Like yeah. as far as in their head, you know, again, it's the other quote of no man is the is the um, villain of his own story. No. So, a lot of people are doing things for, for reasons they think are good, but I think the El Dark Eldar know they're evil as shit. Yeah. Like, they know what they do is is horrible and, and despicable, and mm. they just don't care. Yeah. Like, the that fact is... that, knowing that makes them happier. Yeah. The fact that they delight in, not only do they know yeah. what they are doing causes suffering, mm. But they delight in the knowledge of the fact that they know yes. that what they do causes suffering. Yeah. As opposed to Fabius Bile, who is experimenting. Who's thinking, I'm here to improve Inf- people. I mean, like, unfortunately, yeah. the experimentation means that some things are going to go wrong. Yep. But I, I'm trying my best to, to solve these, ask these questions and better humanity. Like, Tyranids, I don't think, actually have any thoughts on the matter. No. They just eat. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we don't know. Mm. That's, we don't we don't believe that the Tyranids mm. are... Well, that's the thing about, again, Devastation, we'll come back to the yeah. bar, is the, is the thing that maybe they're being vengeful. Yeah. But I still think that they're out and out, like, goal and methodology. It's yeah. just, they're not evil about it. They don't do things to cause, cause pain. Pain. That's the difference. I think there's the thing between evil and, like, I wouldn't say any of the factions in 40k are good. No. Every it's faction hard. has its It's has hard its to find the good guys. And that's um, the point. Like, that's part of what yeah. makes for but this, this question was but, specifically but evil. evil. That's the point. There's a the difference evil. between not being good and yes. being specifically evil. Yes, that's and I, was, and I will say that's why I say Dark Eldar because yeah. they know what they they're about. Yeah. So if you look at orcs, for example, who love fighting and violence, they don't they, they don't love fighting and violence because they want they 
like it's a it's their hobby it's, it's their, their thing. It's the thing for life yeah. reason for life yeah. they yeah. don't yeah it's within their nature yes yeah they fight themselves as much as anybody else they just fight yeah. other people because it's different yeah and the necrons have a very wide variant of... again because they're just a, they're just another society yeah like that's the thing a lot of them a lot of these races are just societies like the like humanity and but there are evil with members of the necrons of course there's new members well, of every race yeah. also with necrons there are many other societies within the 40k universe that want to wipe the Necrons out. Mm. Yeah. Completely. So yeah. what do you the do in that case? The Imperium for a start. Exactly. Yeah. What do you do in, in that case? You fight to preserve your life. Yeah. And the, like, for example, the Necrons despise the, the Immaterium. Yeah. The warp. And, yeah. and have worked endlessly to get rid of it. Well, they created Black, Black Blackstone with that yeah. particular thing in mind. Mm. But the, the faction as a whole, which is what the question was, mm. uh, there, aren't, there are fun-loving Necron uh, really? Lords out there who have a whale of a time, mm. um, and there are like orc war bosses and all sorts that have a whale of a time. The fact yeah. that they have a whale of a time while kicking mm. the shit out of something is, yeah. you know, there's, a, there's, there's plenty of examples of evil yeah. people and there are and evil characters <clears throat> yeah. amongst every faction. Yeah. But as a whole, the faction itself is not. Yes. It's it's reason to think is not evil, no. except for the dark elder. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. that's um, a thing that essentially. I do like. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna add something actually because mm. something came into my brain yeah. as we were talking about this about oh, chaos. Dear. Tip your head on one side. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. Uh, we were talking about Nurgle last time, mm. and we forgot to mention Nurgle's garden specifically. We did, yeah, the garden. And, and I want to add this to the last one mm. while I remember it. In the uh, when the Eldar fell, their gods were mostly destroyed. Uh, Caleb and Chicane was shattered into pieces. That's yes. where you get the avatars on mm. the battlefield. They're bits of him. Yeah. And all the others, apart from Chegarak, who is now the laughing god, the god of the he hides Harlequins. in the webway somewhere. He's in the webway, and he protects the Harlequins. Yes. There is one other. Well, two. Which is the other one? Inade. Oh no, that she came about later, but she was still there. Well, fair enough. Anyway, we didn't... I'm being pedantic. So yes. Like... Fuck you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the important one. Yeah, the one you're. The one you're yeah. The one I'm talking about mm. was squirrelled away. Yes. By grandfather Nurgle. Mm. What was her name? Aisha. Aisha. Aisha is the Eldar's god of like birth, life, healing, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And when the Eldar fell and the Eye of Terror opened and Slanesh was born. Uh, Grandfather Nurgle swept her away before Slanesh could eat her and kept her in his brewing room mm. where he tests all his plagues and things on her. Yes. And But she, now knowing how to cure all these things, whispers into the minds of Eldar and, and humans and all the things, the cure for these diseases. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so we, I want It's a very Pandora's s- box kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. A, I feel like very much it's it speaks very much of like Persephone. And Persephone, yeah, to yeah. Me. yeah. Mm. It's got yeah. a Persephone vibe to it. Yeah, uh, but yeah. it is important. I forgot to mention is. I did. We forgot to mention it last time, so I'm going to bring it up now while it's fresh in my mind. Yeah, uh, that that is a thing, and there you go. That is the thing, and that's where she is. And uh, um, and obviously laughing at Mortarian, who is in the garden sulking somewhere. Yeah. Um, now then, here's an interesting question for you, Pete. Yep. What would you say was the largest faction in 40k? And then I'm going to go on to some fantasy bits. Okay, so, again, the, the, the default answer would be Tyranids. Because we don't know how many of them there are. So, uh, well, I, I'll I'm take gonna, that away. Let, let me clarify. Let me clarify. The Currently in the galaxy. The galaxy. There okay. we go. In, in within the galaxy. So that rules out demons as well, because again, yeah, they're not in there, and nope. also technically infinite. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the large faction currently would be the Imperium. I would say humanity. Okay. Because the next one down would probably be like orcs. Yes. They tend to be concentrated in the small areas. So whilst there are a lot of them in an area, right? Humanity is galaxy spanning. True. And if we take like the fact that Earth, with its eight billion people, is probably somewhere on the lower average size, because obviously there are plenty of worlds that are a lot smaller than like big angry worlds where there's not as many people, but yeah. there are like massive fields for farming. And then you've got hive worlds where eight billion people fit into two or three cities. Yep. I would argue that humanity is the largest faction because in terms of pure numbers. Okay. Because they are... Because it is our... In, in terms of galactic timings, 
this is the time of human ascendancy. So before us, it was the Eldar. They had it their galaxy expanding yeah. empire. Before that, it was the Necrontier. So, yeah, like each age has its sort of dominant faction, and we are currently that. Yes. Um, obviously, things can go horrifically wrong, but I would say right now, humanity is the most widespread and the most populous. But like I said, most of that population is doing feck all. Yeah. In, in, in galactic terms. Yeah, in so. galactic terms, you are a cog. A very tiny cog. Yeah. In a, a very, very tooth of a cog. cog. Yeah. yeah. You're very, very tiny. So yeah, that would be my, my view on it. I think I agree. I think yeah. the only one that might be close to it, but we don't know about it, is the Necrons, because they haven't woken up yet, right? Yeah, but they were, again, they're, they're, they were beaten in a war. Yeah, so, that's like, true. They were in a war at the time for galactic dominance between them and the Eldar. Yeah. So that means, like, one would assume roughly half the galaxy, maybe? Yeah. Let's just say, you know, you know yeah. half or... And then... We, we've it's, lost a bunch since. Do we count scarabs and shit though? No, because they're just like constructs, right? The constructs are just they are. They yeah, in that case, they, yeah. We, we're talking about the people who the 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 living entities that were bio transferred into. Oh, definitely not then, because there's yeah. a, a lot of the Necron stuff is constructs, right? Yes. And uh, a lot of their things are. They are literally robotic. I, I think it probably would revolve something like humanity first. Yeah. Orcs and Tyranids after that, because there's yeah. quite a lot of both of those. Yeah. And then you're looking at like. Uh, Necrons and Eldar. Necrons, Eldar. If we take Eldar as a race. Yeah, the whole of the Eldar. Yeah, race. Necrons are a race. And um, then Tau, right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. Because there's like Tau. four of them in the corner. Yeah. Galactically speaking. Galactically speaking. Yeah. Um, so, uh, mention Tau, and that actually mm. just jigged my memory. Mm. Given the, 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 the way that things are going, can the Tau ever win? No. Do we think? No. They basically, the only reason they still exist as a race is the tournament. Is the fact that the Imperium keeps getting distracted. Mm-hmm. Because but given these distractions and the amount of damage other things but the are thing is, doing to them... The reason they can't win is because they don't have true interstellar travel. That's true. the thing about... about yeah, about they Tau move too slowly. Is they can skip between systems, like locally, so to speak. Yes. So And like the distractions allow them usually to pick up the odd world or two here and there and expand their empire, which for them is awesome because they're like, we've got three new worlds. That means like... We've added 12% to the size of the empire. Yay! Yay. Humanity's like, that's basically a footnote. It's a rounding <laughs> error. Um, no. Uh, so, yeah, like, they're going to hang on to their little pocket, I think, and take advantage of distractions so they're going to fortify themselves. And always, and the thing is, they're always going to be low on the priority list because of that. Yeah. Because the thing is, if they ever start getting to a point where they look like they might pose a challenge, the Imperium's going to be like, look, Nids. Just hold on. <laughs> Let's just stamp these fuckers out. We'll be back, back in in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Just send wave after wave of Creed guardsmen at these uh, yeah. those guys while we go and deal with the freaking upstart Tau. So I think that's the thing. They survive by the fact that they are not a threat. Yeah. Do Do you think that the because I've listened to some mm. of the lore and, and bits and pieces and novels about the Damocles Gulf, Gulf yeah. campaigns, mm. where essentially. Uh, they thought they were winning, yeah, and they probably weren't. Mm. Uh, they were winning the battle, yeah. But do you think that the Ethereals actually know what they're up against? Because I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I don't, I don't think, think they, they know. I think the thing is, you can't have that concept, right? Like you don't. If all you know is this Tau Empire, you know there's stuff out beyond the borders, yeah. right? And in theory, you can think of a galactic expanding empire. Like even though, like even we guys, like, we can't really picture the Imperium. No, it's it's too big. Like you, yeah. you literally cannot picture it. You know, it's like it's so far flung. Yeah. Especially in this age where we have intercommunication around the whole world, like, and you can go to anywhere in the world within a day. Yeah. Okay. Like, in the age of sail, maybe you mm. could kind of picture that the fact that something is like months away. Yeah. You know, like, but it's hard to imagine that in a in a modern context. So I don't think the Tower have any clue. Um, I uh, I also think that. If they if they had any idea of the vastness of the other factions that mm. they are up against, they would just surrender. So and they fortify their border. I I think mean, they, yeah, the thing is, they're a fanatical race. Like yeah. at the end of the day, but yeah, sensibly they just fortify their borders and just be like, look, no, no one. Yeah, this is it. We're, we're fine not, with this. Like, yeah, just don't come in. We're staying here. Yeah, you're not coming in. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna. That's, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. They, they, but they, they have this fanatical thing of spreading the greater good. So if they had any clue what they were up against. Mm they would realise yeah. that it would be so pointless because they're outnumbered. 
a million to one or whatever. Yeah. They're outnumbered. Billions by. to one. Billions yeah. to one. Yeah. And like you can't you can't fight anything no. it, on those odds. Yeah, it's well you one could also but also argue that, you know, a dripping stream can wear down a mountain. Yes. Yes. And that's their view. Yeah. Like their whole yes. thing is, and like I said, the thing is, they have that cure. They have that the optimism of youth because they are a young species. Yes, and they, they and they they're ascendant and things. But yeah, that's they, that's they their flaw. But, but that's their flaw. But that's their flaw, right? Yeah. They're like they they are youthful. Because in the they believe in the superiority of their own te- of their own um, ideology and technology. Which technological wise, they are correct. Yeah, and give them a few more thousand years, they could be surpassed. And once they, once they get light speed travel. Mm. Then I think people are in trouble because uh, you know if if anybody's going to develop light speed travel, it will probably be the uh, the the, the tau, tau, and yeah. once they have that, well, I would have thought they probably went to but they might figure out how to make there's a there's a possibility they could have figured out how to make their own webways, yeah, or something similar, something similar, yeah, yeah. they could have they could achieve that technology by themselves, yeah, and then um, once that travel is capable, then they're the then then they yeah then you can't nail pin them down, yeah. And that's, and the that's where they're hitting run because their biggest issue is that their navy is shite yes like I loved it in in um, one of the things in the in Battlefleet Gothic was like the I think it's called the hero class mm. like they're like the hero class was an attempt by the Tau Empire to make a, a ship that could match a lunar class cruiser it failed yeah and the lunar class cruiser is a bog standard cruiser it is so mm, small yeah, ship. the whole thing about them is that if if the Imperium catch the Tau in space, the Tau get fucked yeah. like proper fucked because they just do not have they do not have a concept of in, of like um, big space void battles. War. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they are in the Damocles lore, there was a section where it's like if we can kill this space marine chapter master, then you know they will all fall apart and become well. That's like, when they killed um, the, the the chapter master of the Raven Guard. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then all all that that did was get someone else in charge of the Raven Guard and set them on the course of we will kill everything that we come across. So conversely, yeah. what we what we did as a species was we went this ever saw assassin is going to find the command bunker that on Var is in. Yes, and it's going to turn the entire bunker into a Jackson Pollock painting. Yep, tinted red. Because that's why people don't. That's why the other thing the Tower Empire don't realise is that their beloved Space Pope has been dead for quite a while. Yeah, the, 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 he got turned into jam by an Eversor assassin. Yes. Uh, in the same sort of vein, though, I did despise the way that the other ones all survived. They sent an execution force, and obviously there was four of them, mm. and only one of them succeeded. Yeah. The others all got beaten and dead, and that is just. There's also one thing I didn't like about the story of Damocles was the fact that Commander Shadow Sun beat. The chapter master of the Raven Guard in close combat. Uh, he, oh, it is described actually how mm. they did that. Which yeah, I could because I, I, I was I remember so, seeing that thing and thinking. So Brrr. Commander Shadow Sun, knowing that the chapter master of the Raven Guard was after her, yeah, basically started to dress up her subordinates mm. as her. Yeah. So then lured in mm. the chapter master of the Raven Guard deliberately into an ambush. Yeah. He then went ham on one of her subordinates and killed her, mm. killed the subordinate in the mm. suit, and was like, right, we've done it, we've finally won, turned around and was like, oh shit. And the Shadow, Shadow Sun just opened up an entire fusion blaster into them Fair as way. he was like, victory! Oh crap. Uh, so it wasn't, Shadow Sun didn't really beat him in close combat. Right, okay, then that's it, fine, because that was, really tweaked Yeah, him. It, was, it, was, it was sort of the way it was described was, he was in close combat, with mm. the thing, the, the tower that he killed, mm. but he wasn't in close combat with that wasn't Shadow Sun. Yeah. That was a trap, and it, it was all organ- orchestrated to get him. Well, she is um, the exemplar of the patient hunter. The, the patient, Kion. yes, yeah. the Kion, yes, indeed. So that is literally, yeah, that's how they got him. Yep, yeah, uh, and he then got killed, and then uh, Kai Von Shrike, I think. Shrike became chapter master. Became chapter master yeah. after that, and swore mm. that he would kill Shadow Sun, but mm. she keeps escaping. Because she is quite sneaky. I'll get uh, you next time, um, Shadow Sun. Sun. Yeah, pretty much that was the whole of the Damocles campaign for the, uh, for Raven, the Guard, Raven Guard. Yeah, yeah it was uh, a thing. But yes, you're saying fantasy now. A fantasy now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, just, a, just a quick one. Mm. Uh, is the lore friendly, Pete? Is it friendly lore for Warhammer Old World fantasy? I don't know anything about Age of Sigmar because. Uh, um, I think we discussed this a little bit before. Mm. I think I would say it's more friendly. Like if you delve in, it starts getting darker and darker and darker. Mm. But I like to describe like I describe forty k as a pitch black room with a few candles flickering in it, 
which are your you know your your heroes and your flickers of hope and things yeah. like that. I like to think of fantasy more as a room lit by a fire, where there's shadows flickering in the corner. I think it is a friendlier place in the. I don't know. There's something. I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel as pretty. Even the bad like factions, like the Dark Elves are doing. So the Dark Elves doing their raiding and things. It doesn't feel as. M- I know that like if you when you think about it objectively, it's horrific and horrible. But there's something about it being in a fantasy setting. Mm. It feels that more kind like of has people. a little bit of like oh those rap scales. <laughs> you know, like I don't know what it is about it. I like, feel like it feels it feels more like Lord of the Rings. It feels like yeah, we're going on an adventure. Yeah, there. there's a lot of evil, horrible people. But yeah, there's like you know, see, Lord of the Rings is like that. There's a lot of evil, fact, like genuinely horrible factors. They're going to do despicable things to you. But yeah, there's just something about they have that kind of ah oh, adventury kind of. Do you think that because uh, like the Dark Eldar, mm. uh, Dark, Dark Elves, Elves yeah. Dark Elves, I should mm. say. And the Skaven are yeah. two that come to mind. Mm. That are objection, are objectively mm. evil factions. Yeah, Skaven especially mm. are given such a silly way of going yeah, about it. Exactly. The it's the Dick Dastardly thing. You forget. Like when you think about what Dick Dastardly, the plans that Dick Dastardly has in Wacky Races, the yeah. things he's trying to do to people. Yeah, you're like. This, why do we let him race? Like this guy's evil. He just wants to kill everybody. Like yeah. the fact that he's comedically inept at it shouldn't stop us from saying, like, no, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think that's the thing. He yeah. hate, they they get the Dick Darcy thing of, oh, he's, he'll get him next time. Yeah. Like, right. and I think that's the thing with Skaven is that their plans, like, they had a plan to shoot down the moon for Christ's yeah. sake with an enormous cannon. Yep. You know, they they try to build a massive bomb under Middenheim. Like they were, it, it, it's very much the Scooby Gang. Like, yeah. oh, it really <laughs> is. Would have gotten away I mean, with it too if it weren't for you meddling. Well, that's the gash. Well, well, that's Thanquo as yeah, well. Yeah, Thanquo's like, Thanquo's Thanquo's like his whole thing in the Gotrek and Felix books is like he has these amazing plans, and then Gotrek and Felix just randomly stumble across him, and he's like, "Shit, they are here again, bollocks!" Oh, uh, all, all my plans have been ruined. What by they the Gash? The gash. Oh, look, I'm going to create this massive, ridiculous, evil spell that's going to like kill every living thing in the world, and I'm ready to do it. Damn the fucking rat man! Here. <laughs> like that's the point. Like they come up all... underneath my pyramid every time. Yes, I would have got away with it too if he wasn't a few meddlesome rat, rat men. men. And obviously the orcs are the same. Yeah, like like they have all those like there's just. I think that's the thing. Like, it's a horrible place, and like, if you read something like a Gothic and Felix is a good example. The Gothic and Felix books are fantastic, and you get to see some real dark parts of those stories. You do, like, yeah. poor Felix goes through the absolute <laughs> ringer with like people he meets and friends, and like the stuff. All his friends get him. dead or turned into vampires. Well, not even vampires, but like, like they get attacked and by like, marauding beastmen and yeah. killed in horrible ways and all yeah. sorts of stuff. And it's like. God, poor bastard. Like, yeah, that when you get to the granular side, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. really horrible. Yeah. But as an overall thing, I think, like I said, the fantasy, the slight, and the fact that a lot of like grand plans come a cropper because of stupidity, like the whole end of the of the Storm of Chaos, the original one, where like the epic hero of light Volton is facing down against Archeon, the the, the ever chosen of chaos, and then like. Um, Grim Grinehart just wades in and nuts Archeon and goes, "I win!" and fucks <laughs> off like. It's yeah. always something about it, you know? Like, there's just that little bit of, ah, oh, we'll get you next time. So, like, that, that stops it from being as oppressive, I think, as as 40k. Yeah. yeah. I think I think you if you start to add too much of that into 40k, yeah. I think you'd lose a lot of its... Like, the, well, the thing is, 40k has coined the term grimdark. Yeah. Like when it has to be right though, because yeah, that is, it's, but that's part of its charm. Yes, I think, yeah. and I, but I think that sometimes it gets taken too far. Like, Definitely, I think so, especially yeah. I think sometimes by the writers as well. Yeah, it it's certainly like, does. Yeah, oh, I think so, and everyone's an asshole, and everyone's yeah. a bastard, and I'm like, no, like no, I said, I think I like to think of it as the heroes, black, please. It's the black room with the flickering candles. Yeah. Like, yeah, this one hero, he is a paragon of whatever it might be, of whichever faction you want to name. Um, but there's only so much you can do as one man in a galaxy of trillions. Yeah. Uh, and that's the point, yeah. right? Is like, like, yeah, this guy might be this fucking amazing hero, but what's it matter? Yeah. And I think that's where well, this game works the best. I think, I think it's a prime example, because mm. we always mention it mm. every single time. Dante. I was Dante. Dante. Yeah. This is the kind of thing Dante of. is the prime example yeah. of your consummate hero. Yeah. He wants to save everything and everyone mm. all the time all the time but he can't yeah 
And he is willing. And that to... weight on his shoulders. Yes. And, like, and also him knowing that he's one step away from losing it as yeah. well. Like, yeah. and, but knowing that he can't succumb and just be like, I'm just giving up. I'm just going to give up. No. Yeah. Not like that. that is like, he's the ultimate hero. Yeah, he's, he's the ultimate yeah. hero. He is, and I think he burns brighter. Yeah. Because he's facing what he's facing. Yeah. And his story is better because. I think, of again, it. this is why I'm, I'm really sad we haven't had, like, another book after Darkness in the Blood. Yeah. Like, where he is regent of Imperium Nihilus before the Lion returns. Yes. Um, where we get to see him, like, because the thing about Imperium Nihilus is, right, it's his calf. Yeah. Like, he's in charge of it. It's even more so out of the way. Like again, it, it, it's a great storytelling device for Dante. Yeah. In that, he's even more alone now. He's even more out on the rim, um, and in charge of even more. Like he's he's got even more responsibility. Yeah. But even more like um, you know, like he's more even more ostracized. So from a storytelling point of view, I would love to know. Yeah. Like to hear and again to hear how he became a Primaris Marine. Yeah. I think that would like, be great. I think that's that's a book. I, Guy Haley, please, please that book. Mate, yeah, you are we so, love your book. You so, your please, so good. Please convince write. them to let her write it. Just, just write it anyway. Don't yeah. even ask them. We don't need the yeah, permission. Yeah. Uh, moving on to another fantasy mm. story. Another fantasy question, I should say. Mm. Just a really quick one. Yep. Yeah. Nagash is the most badass dude out there. Mm. Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, yeah. No. I mean, yes and no. <laughs> like the fact that he's impossible to kill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's hilarious to me. He's, like, a, he's a god now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't talk about that. <laughs> no, no, my boy Dante is the most badass. Well, no, with fantasy. No, with fantasy. Oh, with Nagash. fantasy. Nagash is the god of the undead. Like, the fact that he's gone toe-to-toe with, um, like, Teclis and Sigma. Yep. And, yeah, technically didn't win, but kind of did, because Sigma's dead. Yeah. He's not. He's not. Yeah. This Sorry, I got confused because we were just talking about yeah, Dante. Yeah. 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 But, but this is this is the thing, like, Nag- Nagash is, because the thing is, he's relentless. <laughs> right. Like, his plans were always big and grandiose, and in the end, he did kind of win. His, his whole thing was like, yeah, it's, I love... The, the thing is, he's a badass just because he was a man. He was just a dude. Like, he was just some random freaking lit priest in, a, like, a backwards-ass country in the middle of a fucking desert. Yep. And now he's an immortal lich. Like, beyond other liches. Like, in order to kill him, you have to kill him. You have to blow up an entire fucking pyramid. You have to melt down the crown of sorcery, and you have to find his hand wherever that's going <laughs> off to somewhere. It's doing its thing impression across the whole yeah. world. You're like, you have to track <laughs> these things down and destroy all of them just to have a chance to kill him. And you have to kill him as well. That's what I'm and saying. He is yeah, epically yeah. powerful. This is the point, right? Yeah. Like, there are very few. There were like two, I think. I want to say back in the day when you could go beyond. When you could have level five wizards, mm. and I'm pretty certain there have been like two, maybe three, because I don't know if Croak or Master Mundi was a five. But I, I don't know, think they, I don't think they had rules until recently, though, didn't they? Uh, fifth edition, yeah, had, which was a very time, yeah, which was time which they would have had. Uh, I can probably check. I've got the Lizardmen book upstairs. But the point being is, Teclis was level five, mm. and the Gash was level five. Yeah, like, and that tells you everything you need to know right yeah. there. They are the two. They are the two greatest living practitioners of magic. Because I think Master Mundi's n- well, really powerful. Not quite as. Yeah, I think it would be say, Croak, right? That would be the. Uh, but he's not living. He's not living. He's dead. I mean, technically, he's neither in the gash, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Croak is a husk that just keeps casting one epic cataclysmic spell. Oh over no, he's every better game. now. I love it. Yeah, he's looking rather healthy. He's looking very he's healthy like, for a corpse. I, did, I literally what I said when they, when they brought out the new model for his Rage Sigma. I was like, oh, he's, he's getting a bit of flesh on his bones. Yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, doing bad for a corpse. For a, for a, for a several thousand year old dead frog. Yeah, he's doing well for his ages on mm. Croak. Now that he's uh, is, yeah. back on his palaquin. Looks like they've been yes. feeding him up a bit. Yeah, maybe um, he's been spritzing him with water. He's just getting a bit like yeah, desiccated. Is what it is. Yeah, when well, they dunked him in the oh, swamp for a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. Cassandra from Doctor Who. Moisturise me. Yes, yeah. I don't get that reference, but it sounded horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, um, so anyway, moving on. Mm. Uh, this is a random one, and this is a fantasy-based question, dear. Mm. Okay. No, Dante. Dante's not the answer. Dante is not the answer. Oh no! He's the answer to most questions, but not this one. Can humans reproduce with other races? I'm going to say yes. Can, hang on. Okay. <laughs> like willingly. Yes. Yes. Elves. We is it, are there half elves? There are half elves. There have been, there have been, um, it's, it's not talked about, it's not talked about. Oh dear. But it is, yeah, they are, I'm pretty certain elves are the only ones. Okay. Um, because beastmen come from 
humans. They do. Um, we're and we're also, talking about willingly. One way, or, well, no, but one way or another, they tell me they've been born to humans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of all the races, pretty much it's just half elves. Right. Everything else is either yeah, Fimir or um, Beachman. Okay. As far as I'm aware. Right. There's no like half dwarf running around. No, there are no. Well, At least not that I'm aware of. There might be, but I'm not aware of it. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. But yeah, there we go. Quick question, right. quick answer. So, uh, yeah, quick question, quick answer. I agree with you. I think they can. I, I yeah. don't think a lot of it is willing, unfortunately, for the case of some of the other races, um, yeah. which is a bit of a shame. The darker side of fantasy, which we kind of just gloss over and leave to the beastmen. Because, ah, oh, the <laughs> lovable Skaven. Those lovable Skaven. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick. Kill, yeah. kill. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it there with that reproduction question then. Yep. I'm going to save some for next time. Yes. Uh, we hope you've all enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we would appreciate it if on whatever platform you are listening to this on if you would leave a review a like, a share and a comment if you are listening on YouTube we would very much appreciate a subscription you can find Pete at Onyx Dragon Gaming on all of the platforms but on Twitch Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday yep. he would appreciate a follow and if I you've would. got the Bezos, the Bezos <coughs> books free subscriptions yes, if, you, if you're not Prime. doing anything with your Amazon Prime subscription we would massively consider yep. it it is free for you though. and it benefits yeah. Pete greatly uh, Lazy Dragon Gaming on uh, all the social media platforms and on YouTube. We are LD Gaming Live, where we only stream on Mondays and Fridays currently. But we would also appreciate a follow on those. We are trying to get to affiliate status. And we are trying to climb up the ladder of subscriptions on the YouTubes. Uh, If you have any questions, be they lore-based or uh, even gaming-based, but be careful with the gaming-based ones. Me and Pete haven't played for a while. We'll give you a ruling. (laughs) Might not be correct. (laughs) Might not be right. But it'll be a ruling. It will be a ruling. But we will try and help you, and we would love to answer all your questions. I do like the questions. I do. I enjoy enjoy these ones. They're great fun. Our next one's going to be in another 10 episodes. Another 10 episodes. Time, yeah. So please leave any questions you have in the comments. Mm. uh, We'll collate them. We will collate them. Uh, which sounds uh, a bit dodgy, to yeah. be honest. But in the meantime, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from him. And it's goodnight from her. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.